Be thou.
Good evening. Welcome everybody to the conclusion of our uh, weekend meetings. It was a, I've enjoyed listening to the stories and teaching that Stephen, Stephen had from the Bible so far. So look forward to what he has tonight as well. So to begin, we'll have Josh lead us in two songs. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another night weekend meetings. Let's begin worship in the Zion's praises with song number 10. God of our strength enthroned above. Number 10 in the Zion's praises. Thirty-three. Cleanse me. Number four hundred thirty-three in Zion's praises.
Thank you for those songs, Josh. That is kind of following the theme of this weekend. Search me, O God. Uh, Stephen talked about envy, the sins of envy and partiality. So not sure what he's going to share tonight, but I'm looking forward to it. Jude and I were just in Ghana this past week, and one of the things that happened over there, or happens on a regular basis, as you drive, they have police checks. And they're not like our police checks. They check for a different thing. That, um... Anyway, they often let the Ghanaians go because they say, well, they don't know better. But when white people come through, they're like, well, they come from U.S. They should know the laws and what they should do. And it can be frustrating, but um, what was more frustrating to me is when I came back to the US, uh, Jude and I tried to do something different and bring the train home from JFK. And we took the airport train and Long Island train that we were gonna get on Amtrak in Manhattan. And they sold us tickets there, but they didn't like our boxes that we had. It wasn't regular luggage. And they said, uh, yeah, it's up to the conductor. We'll sell you tickets, but he might not let you have them. Anyway, a couple people I talked to got different information. And finally, we were ready to board, and there was an actual conductor who was a manager. And he said, oh, no, that's, you can't do that. That's against our policy. No way. And he gave us an alternative to go buy bags and put it in and... Uh, it just wasn't working out and <clears throat> kept getting different information from different people. And I was a little irritated because I got Sonia then to come up and get us, and we had to wait. And then, um, yeah, we went back again, and then the conductor asked us what we decided to do, and I told him. But anyway, he continued to give Jude and I a sermon about um, learning from life and not letting things get you down, and I was ready to leave before he was done talking, but um, it, it, is, it, is, it is right. Um, yeah, it, it is a good thing to um, make the most of what you're given, and I have to check what is my attitude. And one of the things that helps my attitude is to remember the verse, 1 Thessalonians 5.18, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Another way people say is if uh, life gives you lemons, make lemonade. So, For scripture, I'd like to uh, go with me to John chapter 6, verse 38 through 40. This is a passage that reveals the Father's will. Jesus here is teaching his disciples, um, and he's plainly telling them, why he came. This is the reason he came. John chapter 6, I'll read verses 38 through 40. For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So this is God's will for Jesus to complete the plan of salvation for broken people so that I and you can have everlasting life. Jesus fulfilled the first part of this plan in his first coming, and he will fulfill the second part with the second coming. And it is God's will, it says, Jesus says, that all see Jesus and believe on him, verse 40. So how do people see Jesus today? He's resurrected. And I think we know that as followers of Jesus, that the way people see Jesus is through his followers, which is us, through believers today. So is that a negative 
responsibility of identifying with Christ, that we have to be like Christ. I think, have you ever been at a wedding where the bride and groom were embarrassed of each other and didn't want to be seen with each other? We are the bride of Christ. Christ demonstrated his love to us while we were still sinners. So if we're ashamed to demonstrate his kindness and compassion and love to others, who's the unfaithful partner? And I know even in a marriage, sometimes it's difficult to give, but uh, we can grow in that uh, by our practice, things that we do, and our commitment. And sometimes we fail. We fail in serving Christ and being a good example. But, and sometimes we hurt each other. And when we do that, um, shame the name of Christ, we also hurt the body of Christ. But that doesn't mean we should quit. We should keep on pressing on. This morning we talked in Sunday school about faith. Paul compares faith to a walk, a walk of faith. When we walk with the Lord, walking the straight and narrow path, uh, my wife walks regularly with her mom and neighbor. Uh, Walking is a way of life, slow and steady, faithful living one day at a time. So Jude and I did make the most of our train ticket cancellation. We were three blocks from the Empire State Building, so we walked there and went up to the observation deck while we waited for Sonia to come up. So uh, I feel we made some lemonade out of some lemons. So things will not always go the way we want them to, the way we'd like them to, but how will we we respond? Uh, Is it gonna be with irritation Or is it with an open mind, uh, what's God leading me to or teaching me? Am I thankful in every situation? Let's bow for a word of prayer. God, thank you for uh, your plan of salvation. Thank you for being patient with us and teaching us. And even though we want to go our own way many times, I pray for... Um, an open mind to what you have to teach us. Thank you for your word. Thank you for our brotherhood here, that we can work together and encourage each other to live righteous lives and lives that please you. Be with Stephen tonight as he speaks again from your word, and pray that you would teach us and make us continue to make us more like yourself. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, this time we'll look to Stephen for the message and let him close as he sees fit. Good evening and greetings in the Master's name. I uh, want to take this opportunity first of all, to thank you as a congregation for your prayers, your hospitality, your friendship, and your encouragement. You have been a blessing to me and my wife this weekend. It is, it has been good to be here. It's been good, it's been good to be in the Word, and uh, may God keep you and continue to bless you as you serve the King. Again, Uh, some friends and family here this evening. It is good to see each one come out and worship on a beautiful Sunday evening. The theme verse, I'm going to read that again one last time. Psalms 139, verse 23 and 24, I say verse, verses, Search me, O God, know my heart, try me, and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. 
I trust as we uh, look into God's Word this evening and we, we take the time to reflect on our lives as we look into God's Word, that we, uh, we take care of what needs to be taken care of. I've uh, been blessed with the choice of song. There's uh, one of the songs had uh, one of my points in it, and also with the thoughts that Brother Stephen shared he told you to keep pressing on, or we're supposed to be of those that keep pressing on. And that is the title of my message this evening. As we consider the title, we see the sense to maybe act or uh, remain vigilant or be committed. I believe as we continue, uh, consider this thought of pressing on, it it, it requires action, it requires... um, you know, vigilance, and it requires a commitment to, uh, to stay at it. I think we can all uh, agree that laziness um, destroys almost anything, almost everything, maybe we should say. And I'd like to, for you to consider when you get up in the morning, maybe tomorrow morning, just uh, consider for a moment what the first thing is that you think of when you get up in the morning. What do we think of? Do we think about the cares of this world, maybe news, politics, sports, whatever it may be, business, going to work, obviously we need to supply for our families. But what is the, what is the first thing that we think of? Do we, do we think about God and his word and think about the blessing of a good night's rest? You know, when we, if we go with the, the, the first thing that I mentioned there, the, the cares of this world and things like that, we can... I think it's fair to say that we, we can basically waste a half an hour or an hour of, uh, on things that generally are not very positive. There are, uh, many times they discourage us if we, if we focus on, these, those, on the news and, also, and things like that. You know, when we, if we make that choice to open God's Word, to think about things, uh, we heard about eternal things this morning in Sunday school and devotional you know, think about things that have eternal value as we begin each day. The truths of God's word, we can be encouraged and we can be strengthened and we are blessed. It is so beautiful as we open God's word, the words are the same. It's never changing today, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And I guess I'd like to share this. News is uncertain and God's word is promises. It's nothing but it's full of promises to us, promises for us. I'd like to reflect a little bit on Paul's words in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 58. It's a a benediction. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, that ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And the three words that I'd like to look at before I get into the main part of the message, is steadfast, unmovable, and always abounding. I don't know what comes to mind when you think about being steadfast. I think uh, a, a, a thought that I came to was connected to the true vine, Jesus Christ. And if we consider unmovable, something that is, is uh, not easily swayed, Maybe, uh, I guess I would like to share, maybe not easily swayed by modern theology. And then we look at always abounding in the work of the Lord. Always excelling or doing our best, going that extra mile, giving our all in, in uh, where we are called. I believe it's, uh, and also uh, the sad truth in today, that there's some that have swayed from the truth. They even question God's word. There are so many voices out there with the, with the internet and the, and the sources that we have at our fingertips. There's so many things. You can, you can basically find whatever you feel like finding and, and somebody will agree with you. And that's a, a great danger in, in, uh, to us if we allow ourselves to sway, be swayed away from the truth. It is uh, my prayer that would God, God would help us to be of those that stay connected, steadfast and connected to that true vine, Jesus Christ. The burden of my message is to help us to be able to identify and adjust 
to the tactics of uh, the enemy that we face. And I'm just going to share just a little bit. I, I do enjoy softball, as I had mentioned the other night. And if we look at sports in general, maybe a, the idea of a game or an opponent, uh, one opponent against another, and uh, looking at film study and things like that, they will, um, managers and coaches will take time to uh, look at maybe weaknesses in the other uh, team's game plan. And I believe that's very similar to what the devil does to us. When he, when he sees us maybe the, in an area in our life that we're a weakness, he will uh, attack in that area and, and try and expose that area. In his, that is one of his uh, game plans. I invite your attention to uh, Ephesians chapter 6 for a message this evening. And I have three points the first point being the enemy we face, and the second point being the tools we need, and the third point, the source of our energy. I'm going to read verse Hebrews, uh, excuse me, Ephesians 6, verse 10 to 12 to begin with, and then we'll continue to work through and make comments as we go. It speaks here of the whole armor of God. Verse 10, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Here we see that Paul is encouraging us to be strong in the Lord. And I don't know what, um, maybe there's there's some times that uh, new converts have... uh, believe that the misconception of that when conversion happens, that it is the end of temptations. But I believe that it might only be, maybe we could say only the beginning. Because as, as we see a person taking a stand and cha- you know, going to the side of the Lord and beginning to follow him, the enemy understand, feels that, that change of uh, somebody that has just been maybe floating along. Now he's going against what he desires. And I believe that um, before that, it would have took little effort on his part to, uh, but after conversion, the, you know, the, and the person stepping on the other side, so to speak, this, this major uh, conflict begins. And I think it's, you know, the, the Bible calls us to be, to fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life. You see, we have a choice. <clears throat> And Lord, help us, as the, as the title of the message is, to, to press on, to fight the battle. And if we compare, uh, compare that, that physical battle and that spiritual battle, we can see some similarities. You know, as we look at uh, uh, being physically fit, it takes a proper diet and it takes exercise in order to, to maintain that. And in a spiritual sense, this call to be strong in the Lord it, it, it takes godly exercise, and it is, it is developed also by a diet of spiritual food, being in the Word. We need to maintain that appetite for spiritual nourishment. Do we make it, as I mentioned before, what is the first thing that comes to mind? Are we, are we focused on things that have lasting value, eternal value? Do we open God's Word? Do we make that a priority in our life? Do we make it a priority to attend special services, Sunday evening services, Wednesday night prayer meeting, whatever you guys have here at Blue Ball? Do we, I, I trust as, as you put an effort in, it, it will bless your ministry, but it will do, don't just do it for them, but do it for God. And don't just do it for yourself, but do it for God. It is, it is part of being a part of the body of Christ, being a, being a part of these, of these worship services. I think it's, it's, it's amazing how connected you feel when you're plugged in and you, you make yourself available and stay committed to, to being a part of that. Verse 11 there, I'm going to move on to that. I had read that, but I'm going to read it again. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We see here that he puts an emphasis on the whole armor. It's not... a uh, it's not just uh, maybe some of the armor, but the whole armor. And we see the word, the wiles of the devil. And then we, we could say, well, what are some of the wiles of the devil? 
Some suggest that Satan uh, is saying, wait a while, and uh, you know, getting us to push off maybe responsibilities. But I'd like to ask, how does that work? Maybe as, as parents, how would that work if we push off responsibilities in, in, in child training and so on? It doesn't generally turn out all that well when we just wait, when we just procrastinate and push off. I'll wait till I'm married, then I'll, uh, I'll wait till my children are going. Maybe there's a lot of excuses that we can come up with and, and, uh, and uh, maybe uh, neglect uh, the calling. Maybe it's going on in the mission field. I, I don't have time. I've got to wait till my children are grown. Well, then, you know, then, then the grandchildren come, and then we don't have time. You know, it just goes on and on. So we see that great danger in, in procrastinating, putting off. I'd like to turn to 1 John 2, 15 to 17, very familiar verses here. <clears throat> Love not, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If the, any man love the world, the love of the, love of the Father is not in him. For, if, for all that the, is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. We see this... Uh, you know, these three points here uh, uh, are points of uh, components of the enemy we face. You know, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, and the lust of the eyes. I'm going to just take, briefly take some time and, and look through them. The lust of the flesh, maybe we could say uh, sensualism, a strong craving for something or uh, a desire to have something that gratifies our senses. And it also there, again, it warns against the lust of the eyes. Materialism, we could say being covetous about things that we would, uh, and to possess things that we want. The pride of life, there we could say maybe egotism, thinking highly of oneself, being proud, not uh, the exact opposite of meekness and humility that, uh, that Jesus uh, taught. You know, we look at the, before we were saved, you know, the, the, the flesh or the old man, it, it, is, it, it is a life of being self-centered and, and uh, it's all about me. And often, maybe we have that, uh, we see that tendency of rejecting authority and, uh, you know, that, it, that could be all kinds of authority that we have in our lives. Uh, the, you know, the, those that have the laws of the land, church authority, uh, parents, so on, we as a self-centered person, we reject that authority that's, uh, that is presented to us in our lives. Can we say no to our earthly desires? That is the question. Abstain from all lusts of the flesh which war against the soul. We also find in Scripture how Satan is um, a liar. He's a deceiver. He's, a, he's crafty. He seduces. And he is the accuser. We read of him coming as an angel of light. All these points are, are things as we, as we uh, consider the enemy that we are facing. You know, there's, there's many different, um, he'll disguise himself in different ways. You know, he, he, he takes different approaches based on uh, maybe the, the, the task that he is trying to accomplish. Don't be fooled by external appearance or great speech. We, uh, we see in, in today's uh, day and age, so many have um, disregarded the sacredness of marriage, Ma one man and one woman for life. Many have believed the lie that children are a bother. You know, why would you want to have children? They just, uh, they say that they don't want a family. They don't want to be bothered with raising children and receive abortion. And we know that is murder. Another area that the Satan likes to attack is, is uh, tempting those that uh, open God's word to share, preachers, teachers, to uh, maybe present a message that is uh, mixed some truth with, and with error. And that is a very dangerous thing as well. Just imagine if, if we would open God's word and we would add maybe 5%, only 5% error to the other 95%. It would still be 
that danger that someone would, would stumble to that? Am I willing to listen to brothers and sisters in the church if, uh, if they feel that there is, is something wrong in my life? Am I open to that counsel of, of the brotherhood? Do we fend against the enemy we face? James calls us to resist the devil and he will flee from you. And I believe this is done by taking a firm stand uh, against him. I, uh, going back to this, uh, this scripture, uh, this verse here, uh, Ephesians 6, verse 11, where it says, put on the whole armor. And we see that uh, you know, we, we need the whole armor to, to make it through uh, alive and well, so to speak, in our spiritual life. I'm going to read the next few verses, verse 13 to 17 in Ephesians 6. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall stand, be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked." And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Again, there in verse 13, it again speaks of the whole armor. Verse 11 said, the whole armor. Verse 13, wherefore, take upon you the whole armor. And I just, uh, as, I, as I thought on uh, that, that there, there's twice that it talks about the whole armor. The key word there is the whole, not allowing the enemy to have a small grip or an advantage. As we consider maybe firefighters as they um, uh, dress up to go into a structure fire, they they need that complete uh, armor, that complete uh, set of bunker gear in order to to, uh, withstand the heat that they are facing. If there's one piece missing, this is in a physical sense, it may cost us our life. And there's no... Uh, it compromises our defenses when we're missing that one piece of, of uh, armor. And it is the same way in, uh, in the spiritual life. Many times we get it attacked where we least expect it, and we need that piece of armor. First Peter 5, verse 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is roaming as a, as a roaming lion walketh around, seeking whom he may devour. There again, it, it speaks of how, how uh, we need to be vigilant. You know, we, we see that the, our adversary there, he's, he's roaming a while, around and he's, he's, uh, he's maybe we can envision a, a, a lion, you know, maybe showing his teeth and having these claws. You know, we've seen lions at the zoo and it's, uh, it's not a good sight. We need to be protected. We need to be vigilant. Verse 14, there, uh, like the, make a comment there stand therefore your loins stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth having on the breastplate of righteousness the truth is important for us to be victorious anytime we move away from the truth we lose trust and it destroys um it destroys a relationship It, it it proves that we are untrustworthy and uh, it, it neutralizes our effectiveness in, in the words we say. If we go away from, from, from the truth and things don't hold out, then they're like, um, yeah, I'm not sure. Something isn't holding out. And then people kind of lose trust in us, and all of a sudden our, uh, it, it neutralizes our effectiveness as we try. And, uh, and it, 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 uh, it also uh, waters down our testimony for, for Christ. I found a quote that says, Truth preserves our soul and spirit in Christ, who is the truth. I thought that was very fitting. You know, the truth preserves our soul in, in the spirit of Christ, who is truth. You know, Jesus is, is, uh, is truth. Having on that breastplate of righteousness, this points towards, as we consider this, uh, as I work through this, uh, this portion of Scripture, I, I had to uh, think of a lot of physical comparisons in order to, uh, to kind of give an idea of what that could look like in a spiritual sense as well. 
the breastplate of righteousness. We look at the breastplate. It's the, maybe we could say the, the, the area that um, in our armor that covers our vitals, maybe the, the, the lungs and the heart and the kidney, the liver. And I'd, I'd like to focus on this idea of the heart. David said, create in me a clean heart, O God. A clean and upright heart is very uh, crucial in the life of Christians. There again, if we have that clean and upright heart, we will be speaking the truth. We will, will, we will be reaching out uh, with the truth in love as we interact with uh, fellow believers and, and those that we meet along life's way. We need personal integrity. We need to be transparent. Why would we even want to hide something? We know that our all-seeing, the all-seeing God sees everything. If we harbor sin, bitterness, and unforgiveness, it, uh, it does nothing but it, it, it robs us of joy uh, in, in living. Verse 15, And the feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Having our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. This idea, uh, this, or, you know, we say our feet shod, I believe it's, it's giving the idea of, of movement. It's giving the idea of a mobility. Are we ready to go share the good news to, uh, to the world around? Or, again, going back to are we, going, are we one of those that want to procrastinate and, and make excuses? Which, many times when we do that, is nothing but a good excuse. Maybe we can sometimes justify that we can't go with, with health reasons or whatever. But most times, many times, I should say, it's just a good excuse. It's, there's really no good reason that we can't. I also know that there's some that, uh, I heard a, uh, a quote that said, there's some that won't appreciate the sacrifice that you make, but make it anyway, do it for the Lord. And I think that is something that we, uh, we see sometimes. There's people that uh, maybe it's because of um, just busyness and whatever, they don't even recognize that someone is sacrificing and, and, uh, and going or sharing or whatever it may be, doing uh, something that builds, uh, helps build God's kingdom, and they won't even appreciate, they won't even acknowledge that, that something is being done. But we shouldn't be doing it for the recognition of men anyway. Do it for the Lord. <clears throat> Verse 16, all, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. We heard about faith in the Sunday school lesson this morning. Above all, the shield of faith. I believe it's, uh, it's uh, important to notice that it says it is uh, that we need faith. Above all, we need faith. Faith is the, uh, the verse in the Sunday school lesson. Faith, the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Faith is a conviction that, uh, uh, that those things that... Faith is a conviction that those things not seen or a reality. When we have faith, we need to, uh, we need to have faith to, to fend against the darts of the, of the enemy that we face. I also uh, came across another interesting quote or that I saw, uh, felt was very fitting. It says, faith isn't believing that God can, but it is trusting that he will. I believe that is uh, very true. It's not just believing that God can do something, but it's believing that he will. And if we, if we exercise our faith, we will be strengthened. It will, be, it will help us to, uh, to continue on. And it will be an encouragement to others that we meet along life's way and uh, when we express our faith to them. Verse 17, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. As we look at the physical side of it, the helmet of salvation, maybe a helmet we would think uh, uh, maybe of the brain and the area, uh, the, the, our head, the, our brain, the, the part that does the thinking. And uh, we know that God's plan of salvation is through Jesus Christ. And in 1 Thessalonians 5, we can see that there's a connection between the helmet of salvation and the hope of salvation. Our, our enemy tries to, to sow doubt 
and uh, discourage us as in uh, seeds of doubt and discouragement in our lives, in our minds. But we can be assured that God will triumph by the protection of this helmet of salvation. God will prevail. I'd just like to encourage us to trust God. And there in the end of verse 17, it says, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The Word of God, we have it right here. We can, we can read it. We, we, we take it for granted so many times. We can, you know, there's areas in the world that don't have Bibles. How many times do we think about that? We can freely come together and worship. We can read God's Word on a regular basis at, in our homes, and uh, uh, nobody is going to say, no, you can't, I mean, up to this point. So continue on doing so. Let's be thankful for that. That sword of the Spirit, the, the word, uh, God's Word, we need to read God's Word, and if we familiarize ourselves with God's Word, we will not fall uh, into temptation to follow some counterfeit um, uh, Bible or doctrine. There's many signs of untruth around us in the world today. People not f- holding fast to God's plan. I, as I mentioned before, you know, marriage. There's a lot of uh, a lot of um, uh, just confusion in the world on on uh, marriage and and uh, just uh, gender confusion and all these things. But let's be careful that we don't give in as a church as a, a as uh, believers in Christ, that we uh, don't give in to these pressures from the outside, these trends that, that are around us in the, in the outside world. Second Peter 3 verse 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning His promises. Concerning His promises, and some man count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come through repentance. We see this, uh, the, in this verse, I see how um, we see. I see that uh, God has a great deal of patience, and I just like to spend a little bit of time uh, as a uh, as a uh, young man. I I didn't always follow what my parents wanted, and they they uh, they showed a great deal of patience uh, to me. And I, I recently talked with a man, and he said he uh, he worded it this way. He said. Many times people think that, uh, um, or he worded it this way, it's way more effective to reach out with an open hand than to tell somebody with your hands around their throat. I guess what he was relating to is having patience, showing love, caring, reaching out to them rather than, you know, maybe saying you're going to do it this way or what or or else, you know, so uh, so on. And I I had to to think back on my life and the mistakes that I made. I know my dad many times said when I, when I would say, I'm not sure why I made that mistake, and he said, uh, t- take it as a lesson and move forward from here rather than criticizing the mistakes that I had made. And I think that is very important as parents that we, we show patience. I mean, obviously, there's times of, uh, that action needs to be taken. Maybe I'm not uh, going to uh, go into that. And one last thought In the sword of the Spirit, you can turn to Hebrews 4, verse 12. Very familiar verse here. It says, For the for word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. I'd like to just look at that last phrase there. We see that in that phrase it says, A discerner of the intents of the heart. We know that God's word is alive, and uh, it helps us as we as we familiarize ourselves with it and open God's word and read it. It helps us discern uh, right from wrong. Let's be doers of the word and not hearers only. After all, Jesus said, "If you love me, keep my commandments." Now, the last and uh, final point, point number three, the source of our energy. And as, I, as we began the song, uh, service this evening, the first song we sang was God of our strength enthroned above. I was just blessed by those words. I mean, I'm not going to go and read all of the words, but it was, I felt like it was just, uh, if I would have uh, thought of the song in my studies, I probably would have used a few phrases. But it says, God of our strength enthroned above, the source of love, the fount 
the source of life, the fount of love, there we see that where our strength comes from, God is the one that brings our, our, our energy. That's the source of our energy. And I like to read verse 18 here in, in uh, Ephesians 6 yet. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. God supplies our every need. As we read there in the song and also in that verse, He knows what is best for us. And sometimes uh, maybe we don't understand. Maybe we, maybe we feel like, uh, why is this the path that you're, uh, you're taking me down, Lord? What, why, why me or why this? But God knows what is best for us. I'd like to turn to Psalms 121. Gives another... Uh, uh, psalm on, on uh, uh, where uh, God helping us and where our help comes from. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall not slumber nor sleep. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Just very beautiful words there in the last three verses, uh, last two verses. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. He shall preserve thee from coming in and from going out and coming in from this time forth and forevermore. What a beautiful promise there, forevermore. Uh, I think sometimes we, we, we struggle to, to uh, grapple with that idea of, of forevermore. It is, is something that is very hard for us as humans to comprehend sometimes uh, forevermore. And also uh, with Paul's words in, in Galatians 6 verse 9, it says, as we uh, consider uh, the idea of pressing on, just uh, I was t uh, led to these verses, and let us not be uh, weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. May God help us to keep pressing on, staying focused on eternal things and the glory that he will reveal to his own. Again, I want to thank you for your uh, prayerful uh, attention and attendance that was given. Let's kneel for a word of prayer. Kind, merciful God in heaven, we come before you this evening thanking you for the many blessings that you have given us. Father, just... Be with us, help us to continue to press on, follow your, uh, your commandments, follow your ways. And as, a, as a, a church here at Blue Ball, we just ask that you would uh, be here for them, help them to be drawn together and continue to serve you uh, as a body of uh, believers together, uh, maybe showing each other if there's areas that need to be strengthened and just continue to encourage each other. Father, also we want to pray for us as we travel back home, grant us safety if it's your will, and be with our family at home, and just uh, ask that you would be with each one as we go from here, and tomorrow as we wake up, that we would be of those that would reach for God's word rather than reaching for our cell phones, and be strengthened and encouraged, and be of those that faithfully follow you. We ask all this in your name, amen. Turn with me in your church hymnal to number 475. I'm pressing on the upward way. Number 475 in the church hymnal.
you, Stephen, for leading us in that message. He talked about uh, the devil as a lion. Lions and cats are always on the offensive. They prey on their victims, unless the cat's name is Garfield. But um, he's saying, resist the devil and he will flee. So that also means that we are supposed to be on the offensive as well and not just on the defensive. So how do we be on the offensive against uh, Satan's attacks? I think one of the ways is by a fellowship coming together, listening to God's word being taught. But I think that's just one aspect. Um, He also talked about connection with uh, the source of truth, which is the Lord, through his word, through our devotion to him, our communication. I think how Jesus responded to temptations. And some of the temptations, I think, are hard to relate to until you really start thinking about them. Um, I'd said the first night that a lot of temptations like envy um, often are legitimate things. The devil offered bread, but he offered it in an illegitimate way. And isn't that how our temptations are a lot? Um, Possessions, nothing wrong with owning things, but then the temptation there is of pride. He also, Jesus was tempted by the devil with power. And power is nothing wrong with it. God offers his power to us freely, but the temptation is to use power for ourselves selfishly. And then he ended with the promise, the Lord's promise to preserve us. So it's not just us fighting against the devil, but if we are on the Lord's side, he will help us overcome the devil. Any uh, thing that uh, open it up for any testimonies, uh, have you learned any new truths or discovered a truth or been impressed with anything that you heard from God's word this weekend? Just give a short time to open it up if anybody has anything to share. We have a new week ahead of us, so let's remember what we've been challenged with and face a new week, um, resisting the devil offensively and not just defensively. So, yeah, if there's no uh, testimonies, that's all right. I want to thank the trustees for the meals and for opening up the church and the ushers and whoever else had part in the service and especially for Steve and Catherine for coming in and sharing the weekend with us. So uh, we appreciate that. So let's stand for benediction and after the song you can consider yourself dismissed. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be with you. In Jesus' name, amen. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest strength but holy in Jesus' name. Bye.